A haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. I am very happy, as always, to be with you again for another episode. I hope your Tuesday is going well. I hope your week is going well so far. So far, so good with this week. I am having a much less dramatic week than I was at this point last week. Of course, I'm also not getting ready to fly to Paris tomorrow, but hey, that can't be every week, right? Um, and I am grateful that the drama of last week <laughs> has not pres- has not picked up this week. Um, Hubby's feeling better after his visit with the doctor last week when we got home, so I'm grateful for that. And yeah, just grateful for the little things that the drama is not seeping over into this week as well. At any rate, we, of course, are here to talk about a book, to talk with an author about her book. In this case, it is author Erica Pluff Lejour. The book is Proof of Me and Other Stories. It is a short story collection. Let me go ahead and give you the description of that book. All things are delicately interconnected in in these stories set in a small town in eastern North Carolina. From the rambunctious antics of an erstwhile shad queen to the guilt-throttled grief of a secret affair gone wrong, Proof of Me stitches together the lives and adventures of each of its characters in unexpected and peculiar ways from one story to the next. So again, that is the description of Proof of Me, and it is a collection of short stories, as you heard. If you are a regular listener to the podcast, then you know that I sometimes struggle with short stories simply because I want to know more about the characters that I start to get to know in a short story. And so I I sometimes feel frustrated that I don't get that. I really appreciate this collection because of the connections that are mentioned in that description. It is not linear. It is not, uh, it doesn't read like a novel or anything like that. But there are lots of connections between the stories. You'll be reading and you'll recognize a name and you'll think, wait, didn't we just hear something about that character? Or that sounds familiar. And you realize that you encountered that character in another story. And so for me, I really appreciate that. You get some continuation. You get to hear a little bit more about some of the characters that you are introduced to in this collection. That you get a few more glimpses than you might in a collection where the stories aren't connected. And of course... That's perfectly valid. This, you know, a collection of short stories where there are no con- connections. That's just another type of collection. But for me personally, and the way that I read, I really did like the the Easter eggs, if you will, those connections throughout the stories where I got to see a little bit more of some of the characters that I had gotten to know as I was reading through this book. Um, so again, it is. Uh, Proof of Me. The author is Erica Plouf Lajour, and we're going to go ahead and get started with that interview so that Erica can tell you more about this collection, her inspiration for it, some of the inspiration for the stories, etc. Hi, Erica. Welcome to the podcast. Hi. Thanks so much for having me, Sarah. It's great to be here. Thank you for being here. I am excited to have you. Um, We're going to talk about your collection of short stories. Before we get to that, though, if you would please share a little bit about yourself, that would be wonderful. Um, Sure. Yeah. So I am, um, I teach high school English and um, have done so for about 12 years now. And uh, prior to that, I was a newspaper reporter and um, Beyond all of that, um, I love to draw, I love to write fiction, I love to um, play music, and um, yeah, I live in New Hampshire, and um, I don't know, I think if, if there's anything else, I'm, I'm happy to share it, but but yeah, that's a kind of good overview of, of, of me, I suppose, yeah. Okay, wonderful. Um, 
in terms of the book, uh, it's called Proof of Me and Other Stories. Can you give, it, it's short stories, but can you give kind of an overall, what, what's your elevator pitch for this for the book? Yeah, so I would say these stories are a little bit like constellations um, in the sense that you kind of have these this set of connected stories um, and not in a way that makes them into a novel, but more in a way that kind of like living in a small town where you kind of know some, a little bit about something or think you know something about somebody else and everyone you meet has a story to tell and everyone you meet in some way knows the other, another person that will inevitably show up in the collection. And so it is set in um, rural North Carolina in a fictional place called Mewborn, but although there is a real Mewborn, um, but it's just a kind of a crossing in um, in Eastern Carolina. But um, I had lived in in that part of the uh, of the country for um, about six years, and that's where I got my um, literary chops. I'd always been more of a newspaper reporter and more into um, journalism and um, it wasn't until I got into um, to North Carolina that I really started to um, read a lot of Southern authors and be really influenced by living in this in this um, part of the country, part of the United States, that felt really different to me and really familiar at the same time because I grew up in a small town and I grew up um, thinking I knew stuff about other people and they thought they knew stuff about me. And so um, so there's a, there's a lot of... Um, connections, I think, even though the stories are set in, mostly in in North Carolina, there there's definitely a lot of resonance in terms of um, some of the themes. And um, yeah, so I don't know, it wasn't quite an elevator pitch, but it's, um, I think hopefully give you a little sense of uh, the way the stories are both linked and also, um, you know, their own stories onto themselves. So. Yeah, actually, that that um, the description of, of it being kind of like a small town is very apt. I also grew up in a small town and everybody knows everything and then they think they know other things. <laughs> right, so, exactly. Yeah. Um, you, can't, you can't do much of anything without your parents' phone ringing. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, and I think that's kind of um, a bit of, you know, a, a, a little bit of what I was hoping to to get that that flavor of um, you're never you know you don't live in a vacuum you don't live by even if you live by yourself there's still people who are kind of either tending to you or taking care of you or keeping an eye out on you or spying on you or gossiping about you and so I think there's a lot going on with the way um, the the stories unfold and you know there's one character. Um, uh, Sissy Saunders, who's the the shad queen of, and um, you know, you think, oh, she's kind of like one of those pretty princess, you know, um, you know, girls in a dress, and and it turns out she has a lot of problems, you know, and she puts herself in reckless um, situations and makes bad choices, and you know, you come to kind of understand who she is by people who either don't know her very well or people who love her very much and, and care about her, but also, you know, realize the, the limits of, of who she is and, um, and where, and how stuck she is in her life. So, so yeah, there's a lot of different, um, people like that. Um, there's a series of, um, stories about a young, um, first a young girl named, um, Cassidy Penelope, and we kind of track her life growing up from, as a, from a little girl, um, into, um, her adulthood. And so we get a, a sense of a, uh, you know, trajectory or arc of, of who she becomes and why she might be the way she is. So, so yeah, there's, there's different characters who kind of come out, but, and, but there's always someone who has someone to something to say about somebody else in the, in the, in the, each of the stories. And so you come to understand and get a, a, a fuller, but still incomplete sense of who they are. Mm -hmm. And um, was the, was the location kind of the inspiration for the collection or was there something else that kickstarted this process that, that, that became this collection? Yeah, I don't know. I think it was um, certainly moving down to North Carolina. I've, I felt like I noticed things a little bit more like when you travel, you know, you're kind of like, oh, I've never noticed this before. And you start taking pictures of things. And, um, and I think for a little bit for, for me, um, 
the geography felt um, Im important in that, um, I don't know. I mean, I think North Carolina, that part of North Carolina, there's there's a lot of interesting things going on just, just geographically, like um, the the story uh, spawning season, you know, all of that science um, about the the fish mating habits and all those those little rituals and stuff. That's all like true science and and set in um, uh, the parts of you know wa waterways that actually uh, like scientists in North Carolina actually study these ty specific types of fish and other creatures that are doing you know like studying their their mating habits and such. So um, so in some ways, I think the the geography becomes you know a character a little bit like the way you know Faulkner's Yoknipatawpha County you know has its own characterization and flavor and sense of like presence. Um, you you know how do you um, divorce the stories of individuals from the place in which it happens? And I think um, I think a lot of my because a lot of my storytelling was was born in North Carolina. Um, it became the I don't know, the geography of it felt important to to kind of honor the spaces that I kept thinking about and writing about and um and driving through and walking through every day so so yeah there's definitely a relationship there um and it's funny because i i don't claim to be a southern writer um but i'm certainly a student of southern literature and um you know my one of my graduate degrees is from um is focused on southern literature and so i feel like a lot of my education comes from from that tradition and so I, th I feel like i'm of that tradition although i would not claim to be a southerner or a southern writer all right i'm going to go ahead and jump in so we can take our first break of the podcast when we come back we'll be talking a little bit more about the connections found through these stories and where those connections came from so stay tuned you're listening to the gsmc book review podcast and i'll be right back are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking with author Erica Pluth Lejour about her collection of short stories. It is called Proof of Me and Other Stories. Let's go ahead and return to that interview with Erica. When it comes to the connections, um, did you did you have kind of an idea going in that the stories would be connected? Did that come about as you wrote? Uh, you know, short stories don't always have connections between the stories but but these do so how did that come about for you yeah you know i would say i did not have any sense that these stories were connected as i was writing them um this this is this collection's a, a long time coming i will say that um and i think you know when i first started writing them i was just thinking in terms of story like this particular story or i'm crafting this particular story and then eventually I was thinking about, wow, this character is a little bit familiar. Um, oh gosh, it's just like, you know, if, if I changed a few details, it could be um, Juniper Weaver in another story, right? And so I began to kind of conceive of the way the stories could be connected more in the editing process. Um, for me, it was it was the, the editing and the the going through everything with a fine tooth comb and realizing like, oh, right, this person could be the brother of this other narrator and he's going to show up in, you know, 
the last section. And, and so you're able to kind of like be like, oh, Wiley, I heard that name before. Who is that? Uh, and then you can flip back and you can see, oh, wait, this is the so-and-so's older brother who is now the husband of this woman who blah, 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 you know. So there's, I think it was more in the editing process and realizing the potential for connectivity that made the collection feel connected. It, it wasn't, you know, certainly it's all kind of coming out of my my brain and my imagination, but it, it it's on that detail level and, and going through something and being like, oh yeah, this is, if, if I just change this little detail, it's going to connect up to this other piece. And so I think it really helped with um, having the story feel, or the stories feel coherent and connected to each other. And so once you discovered that or realized that there were these connections and that they could be tied together, how did you... Did, did you have like a, I don't know, a spreadsheet or a family tree or something that helped you to, to figure out who was who and how they were connected and where they fit in? Um, yeah, I'm not really a spreadsheet person, um, but I do, you know, I think it's it's funny because earlier versions of, of this story collection, they weren't um, kind of parceled with, uh, with among families, groups or characters. And so I was... Um, somewhere i don't know like 2019 i was just like wait if i reorganize and i revision these stories that were just kind of haphazardly presented um in sequence if i organize them around the 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 different families and the different groups and geographies of people let's see what happens and and that's when i think the shift kind of in from just being a story collection to kind of a linked story collection took off. So, um, so I would just, I would print out, um, once I kind of knew what I need needed to do, I would print out each section and then go through each story and then kind of go back and be like, Oh yeah, I can change this to this. And so it was, it was kind of treating each little section in its, um, in its own right. And then, moving on to the next section and then being like, Oh wait, this could connect here. And so like kind of connecting back to the first section. So everything's a little bit connected. Um, but it's also, you know, you could read just one story and say, Oh, I got this, you know, I, 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 I can read this one story and not need to read the other stories. But if you do read the other stories, then you'll kind of get a sense of that larger, um, infrastructure and culture that, that these folks are from. Right. It is actually kind of fun if you don't know that they're connected as you're reading through because you might just think this is a collection of short stories and then you start a new story and go, wait a minute, I know this per- I know this name. Didn't we just read about that? Exactly. Exactly. Right. Like, so exa- for example, the, the character, the main character in the first story, the narrator, um, you know, you're like, oh man, what happened to him? And then he ends up being, um, you know, the head, headlining a a a bar band out in Nashville, you know, and you're like, oh, okay. So that's what happened to him, you know? And so it, it, you don't need to know that just from the context of the, of of the Nashville story, but the first story, you know, you, you get his whole, you know, what's kind of motivating him in life and why he was such a jerk to his best friend. And, you know, all of these things that kind of build up and might inspire you to become a better person. And you can kind of see him being that better person in the next story. So there's a reward in, in reading it all the way through, but there's also a, hopefully a reward in, in reading just the stories, you know, singularly as well. So. I don't want to give anything away, but the first story is dramatic uh, <laughs> in, yes. in, in what happens. Um, did you plan on that being the first story or did you decide on that later? How do you decide what order to put the stories in? Yeah, you know, I've had some thoughts about that being the first story, but I think it's, it, I think it's a, it's a powerful story and, and kind of sets up the, the region, the, the, the sense of, I think, kind of, that tone of confession, I think, that keeps coming through in, in some of the pieces. And um, it's also, if you look at in this, if you look at the last story, it, it correlates a little bit where you have um, 
a character named Joey who's passed away, who's died. Um, and then the main character also dies in the end as well. But um, so you've got these, there's these kind of peculiar kind of bookends that made me feel like, okay, this last story should be the last story. And so the first story correlated in, in a kind of a thematic way to it. And so, I don't know, I, I went with it, but, but yeah, I had, I had some, some thoughts, um, you know, cause it is a violent, um, first story, but it's, I don't know, I went with it. So, <laughs> and now it's published. So, you know, second thoughts are, um, yep. Save it for your next book. So. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Did you do any particular types of research for the book? Um, you know, it's funny. I think, well, that first story, um, and I think the event that you're referring to, um, was described to me by somebody who, when I was a reporter, like, um, my first like week on the job, this event happened, a, um, a oil tank exploded and someone was injured and, um, the person telling me, you know, this was easily 20 years ago, um, maybe 25 now. And I just remember being on the phone and hearing his voice and hearing the way he was telling the story and feeling really impacted by it. And it never occurred to me to fictionalize the piece. And then just maybe then 10 years later, I started writing fiction and, and this, this guy's voice showed up. And so, um, you know, I, I think some of the the research isn't quite research, but yet, but rather like a byproduct of just kind of paying attention to um, people and hearing the stories they need to tell. And I think being a newspaper reporter, you know, you, you get really attuned to, um, to hearing people and talking to them and, and drawing them out in a way that enables them to want to tell their stories and feel safe in telling their stories, but also there's a kind of, um, you know, you're not just the listener, like I'm, you know, obviously like I was, I was Im Im impacted by that story as well. And, um, I wanted to come somehow make sense of, of what I'd heard and, you know, particularly the, like the girlfriend and all that, all, that doesn't, that's not, it's not part of the story. It's just that description of, of the, of the tank explosion and, and the impact that it had. So, um, so yeah, I would say, I mean, you know, but then there's other pieces where like, for example, my, um, my dad is a, was a mechanic and, um, he's retired now, but, um, you know, there was another story where, um, at a demolition derby and I was, you know, I shared the piece with him and he's like, well, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, um, smash the windshield you would smash the back windshield, but not the front windshield, because that's a safety issue. And so my first draft had, had the, the little girl was smashing the front windshield. And so I was like, ah, got it. And so <laughs> I had her on the back on the trunk instead of the, the hood of the car, you know, so there's things like that. Um, it, it's informal research, but it's also, you know, anyone who knows if anything about a demolition derby to be like, oh, you don't, you don't put them on the, on the windshield, you put on the back windshield, of course, like, okay. Well, so, um, so yeah, so I, I tend to, to have people or, you know, my friend who's, who is in the army, I was like, you know, what kind of, you know, different things can you go into, um, that would be in North Carolina? And she, she was able to tell me what I needed to know. So like ordinance is a type of, um, something you study at, I think at Camp Lejeune or whatever. So, so somewhere in, in North Carolina. So I was like, ah, got it. So I, I you know, so I, I always ask people who, who know more than I do. Um, and they're more than happy to help me out. So. Time for our second break of the podcast. As we go into that break, I was just thinking and kind of giggling to myself. Um, my, when we talked about connections and how she kept track of connections, how Erica kept track of those connections uh, and I actually made a note to myself while we were talking about spreadsheets. Why do I always go with spreadsheets? I don't use spreadsheets for everything. It makes it sound like I use spreadsheets for absolutely everything. Um, I don't know. It's the first thing that pops into my head when I'm talking to people. And so I always say, hey, do you use a spreadsheet for that? I, I might have a spreadsheet 
issue. I don't know. I'm going to contemplate that while we go to break. And when we come back from break, um, more with Erica. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with Erica Plouffe Lejour. Just in case you forgot, in the few minutes that we were at break, um, her book is called Proof of Me and Other Stories. It is a collection of short stories. Let's go ahead and return to the interview. Uh, the um, the story with the, with the demolition derby I was intrigued by because I was trying to picture my, my hometown has the the, the county fair every year and there's a demo derby at that every year and I, they they would never have it on the football field because people's heads would explode because oh my gosh it's the football field oh. <laughs> so I kept thinking ooh <laughs> that would anger lots of people <laughs> it sure would well they you know they give some grass to, to, to reseed it um, yeah, yeah no. that's, I actually grew up near um a, a, a racetrack like an auto racetrack and we would go every Sunday and every once in a while there'd be a demolition derby and um one year my dad entered it and so um again that's and that's nowhere near a new a true story but there's little bits and pieces of that of that story that are definitely out of my experience as his kid who you know and and then his experience as a driver in the in the demolition derby and so it's it's kind of interesting to you know things things are kind of it's like settings or elements are 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 gleaned from real life events but the stories themselves are completely made up so yeah Mm -hmm. do you think there's a connection between your previous career as a journalist and writing short stories now um there's a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's funny when I first started writing fiction, I had a huge like wall in my brain to jump over because I was still doing journalistic work and I'd just gotten out of journalistic work. I was working at a, like a news bureau at a university, but um, I was thinking, I can't make up what people say. That's like, I can't do that. You know? And so there was this kind of sense of, um, need to adhere to the facts and what happened. And so I think I kind of started in there. And then and then as I realized, like, oh, you can, you know, you can you can invent stuff, you can say stuff, maybe, you know, and, and I felt a little um, braver and more confident and, um, you know, finding a, a place for, um, for fiction to reside within a true, a true story. And um, I think to, um, just just realizing that like every person you meet has something going on has a story to tell is is willing to tell it um for me learning that as a journalist and thinking about that as a as a fiction writer is really to to me that was so important and 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 just realizing like if you're just patient with your sources or patient with your characters they're going to start talking and you just have to like you know, sometimes weed through the less intriguing parts of the piece to, to, to get to the, to the kernel of truth that they're really wrestling with. And, um, 
and you know and and i think really too with um with journalism you know there's there's rarely a kind of perfectly happy ending wrapped up in a bow and and <laughs> i don't think my stories have and much of that um unfortunately but um but what i like about them is that the opportunity is there for them to change and sometimes they do and sometimes they don't but but they understand they could change if they wanted to mm -hmm. and do you mainly write short stories or do you write longer fiction as well um i actually um gravitate a little more toward flash fiction so like super short short pieces like five or five hundred or a thousand words and that's been kind of where I've been able to reside lately in terms of my, um, I don't know, threshold of, of creativity. Um, I've been able to edit some longer pieces lately, but, um, and of course, I, you know, I've got, the, I've got the drawer novel, which will probably stay in the drawer. Um, <laughs> every once in a while I'll, um, I'll pop back in and be like, well, maybe, you know, cause, cause it's a little bit like a logic problem or like even like a math problem where you just like, okay, here's all of these variables. Um, how do I get this to, to add up? Right. Um, and I think the more, the longer your story, the more complex it gets and the harder the, the math gets to kind of extend that metaphor. And so every once in a while, I'll, I'll pick up one of the longer pieces I've, I've written and see is, is, have I figured out the, the path out yet? And, um, usually the answer is no, or sometimes it's like, well, you could take this little section, turn it into a short story. So, um, but yeah, I've, I've, I've been focusing a little bit more on, on, um, flash pieces, um, a little bit of essays. I've been, um, traveling a bit and, and finding words to, for my experiences. So, um, so that's been interesting to, um, venture into the, into, into the essay realm, but, um, I think I'm, you know, a, a little bit more comfortable in the, in the fictional realm than, than the essay realm. So, yeah. Well, it sounds like that you've always written in some capacity or been involved with writing in some capacity through your, um, your different careers, but is writing for publication something that you always wanted to do or how did you decide to, um, to write something to have it published? Um, you know, I, uh, that's funny. I'm not sure that I had an ambition to be a, a fiction writer. Um, when I was younger, I was, I loved reading. I was a big reader. Um, and then when it came time to go to college, you know, I was a very practical kid, working class family kid. And I was like, well, I'm not going to study English, you know, I'm going to study journalism because then you can get a job as a journalist. And so I was always very kind of tracked toward um tracking myself i should say you know toward um you know making making a living and making sure i was financially like you know self-sufficient and able to to do you know have the things i wanted and um and then of course like as a journalist you don't get paid well and everybody hates you and it's just you know there's a lot of reward in the work but it's also really challenging um to just be a journalist and and i can't imagine being a journalist today with it, it you know a lot of local papers have have kind of died out which were kind of the the feeder um publications for to kind of get your chops down and then you go up to the big time you know the larger papers boston globe or new york times or whatever um and i'm not sure how that path works these days but um but yeah, I don't know. I think um, as I was kind of transitioning out of journalism and um, working for the university, and I was like, oh, I can um, I can study history because that's connected to journalism. And then I, I really didn't enjoy it. And I thought, well, maybe law school. And I didn't enjoy the LSAT. Um, and I didn't, I was like, I don't think I want this. I was like, well, what could I do with my like writing skills? I was like, let's, let's just let's just get an MA and see what happens. And so I think, you know, just kind of tracking in, in that direction. Also, you know, the, I don't know if you were, um, recall the Zoetrope, um, which was a kind of, uh, space, an online space when online spaces were kind of new. Um, and you could put your work out for, um, 
critique by somebody and you had to critique five stories or three stories, depending on the length, and then you could see what other people critiqued um, your story. And so you were able to have this really helpful exchange. And, you know, and so I think feeling the encouragement from that community in like late 1900, you know, early 2000s, it felt really good to have um, conversations about writing um, and kind of like taking the ego out of it because nobody knew what anybody looked like. There was no like little photo avatar or anything. Um, and so it was really enjoyable to kind of just have it be about the work and then feeling emboldened, encouraged by that. And then being like, oh, oh, so-and-so has this, you know, this journal is accepting entries. And so, you know, you put it in and maybe you get published and maybe you don't. And um, so, yeah, it just kind of, it started as a very humble ambition of, of like, oh, people are liking my work. Maybe, maybe this is something that could be published or someone suggests it should be published and you go for it and, and then it happens. So, um, yeah, I, I, I would, I, I'm, I'm so excited that this book is out in the world, but it was not like an ambition or anything that I had when I was, when I was younger. I mean, I don't even think I dared to even think that I could do that. But, mm -hmm. but it mm -hmm. so, so yeah, it's, it's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And time for the final break of the podcast. When we come back, Erica's advice for aspiring authors. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Pets bring such joy to our lives, and the GSMC Pets Podcast is here to share in that joy. We'll tell stories of pets finding their forever homes, acting in unexpected ways, being helpful, or just being silly. Whether you love dogs, cats, llamas, reptiles, fish, or you've never met an animal you didn't like, the GSMC Pets Podcast is for you. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Erica plouffe Lejour. From your experience then as a journalist, a, a writer, a teacher, all of those things combined, what advice would you give to an aspiring author? Hmm. Um, I would say um, as, as much as you can, keep, keep your ego um, out of your writing. Um, I had one teacher who said, um, in this, we were in a workshop and the student was getting upset about the, what she was hearing. And the teacher said, in this context, I care more about your writing than I do about you. And, and, and that has always stayed with me. Like it's about the sentences that you make. It's all about like the work. It's not about someone is hurting my feelings as if you you know so i would say as much as you can let your let your writing be about your writing and not about you um and you know i would also say um obviously like read a lot and um and i would also say be willing to edit and revise i think that's the hardest thing and i i really love revision um i'm a fan of it i think that's where the best writing comes from um because you get you know you get your general idea down but then you go back in and and you start working and thinking about sentences and saying your sentences out loud and you kind of go oh there's something off with the rhythm here or oh wait this really is too long and and it doesn't i, I don't need these three words and and all of a sudden your ears are better editors than your eyes are. And so, um, yeah, reading your work out loud is, is advice I always, always give to my, my students. So. Okay. Thank you. You're an avid reader. So when you take the time to read for yourself, as opposed to reading for research, who are your go-to genres and authors? Oh gosh. Um, 
I literally like run the gamut in terms of books, but um, I will say this summer I read um, House of the Spirits by Isabel Allende. I read um, um, The Man with Eight Pairs of Legs by Leslie Kirk Campbell, and she's a wonderful contemporary writer. She just... Um, she and I had our books released around the same time and I finally had a chance to, to read her work and she's incredible. Um, I'm, uh, as a traveling, I found a, a free copy of Dubliners. So I read that through and I realized, um, how it was so much about the, the different voices of a specific geography. And I was like, oh my gosh, Dubliners was kind of an influence in my works because I didn't, and I didn't even realize that how, how tied in these stories um, were to kind of what I was doing. And it was really a, a neat little connector there. Um, and, and I love Miranda July. I think she's such a brilliant writer. Um, and Mark Richard. Um, I love Zadie Smith's essays and of, um, of course, White Teeth. Um, I'm about to reread um, Bernadine Evaristo's Girl, Woman, Other. Um, and what else? And, and then William Faulkner, I always kind of go back to a little bit and, um, and just as a kind of connector back to I think those those southern roots you know Barry Hannah I mean there's 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 plenty of <laughs> there's a lot of writers out there um so I know I've missed some but those are a few that I I kind of think about a little bit when I um consider either influences or, or kind of who I who I go to or, or think about um as favorite writers you mentioned that you're traveling. How many books did you bring, uh, whether that's ebook or regular books, to read while traveling? Yeah, I brought. Okay, so it's funny because my partner is big on Kindle, and I am, I'm, I, I'm not. So, um, and I also like to pack light. But I did bring um, after the earthquake by um, Haruki Murakami. I got The Ministry for the Future by Kim Stanley Robinson. I'm really excited to read this book. Um, and I brought Gordo by, I think it's Jaime Cortez. And uh, Macbeth, but the manga version, because part of um, my travels involves... Um, uh, a Shakespeare component um, with some students that I'm working with. So um, I thought they would be interested in, in reading, seeing that version of Macbeth. So those are some of the books I brought. Um, I almost brought Persuasion, although I'd already read it. By, um, <laughs> but so, yeah, but, um, and, and I plan to get more here as, as I tear through the ones that I've okay. already. Yeah. So those are the ones I'm traveling with. So. All right. I just like to be nosy about those things. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> how about internet presence, website, any social media that you're active on where people might be able to interact with you? Um, so you can find me on the web at um, Erica Pluff Leisure, um, dot com, And then um, the same name at e r i c a p l o u f f e l a z u r e um on instagram and that's kind of my public account and um so yeah that's mostly where i where you you might be able to find me on social media so okay thank you yeah well we have talked about um a variety of different topics so far but erica is there anything that we haven't covered that you would like to mention at this time um I don't think so. I'm just um, really um, glad for your interest. And um, yeah, I, I hope uh, I hope we generate some new readers out there. So yeah, I'm excited to be, be read by, by people. So thank you for, for reading my work. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you so much for taking the time, especially since I know you're traveling. I really appreciate that you took the time oh, to no. talk to me about the book. Of course. No, happy to do it. 
Thank you once again to Erica for joining me, especially while she was traveling. As I mentioned, that was above and beyond for uh, the interview. So I really appreciate that. Thank you um, for joining me to talk about this collection of short stories and the myriad other topics that we encountered as we were chatting. Really appreciate it. Um, If you are a fan of short stories, as I mentioned, I really liked the connections in this. And for me, as a person who sometimes struggles with short stories because of my own way of reading, the connections for me made it an easier experience, a more enjoyable experience. I, all of those things sound so gem- judgmental. I mean, it, it, you know, it is a book review podcast. I'm supposed to be a little bit judgmental, but I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean it from my own personal point of view and the way that I read. So I might be over explaining a little bit, but I just want to say that those connections made it easier for me to not feel so left behind when the characters are not left out or something along those lines when I lost those characters and had to move on to a new set of characters. Hopefully that makes sense. But if you're a fan of short stories, then you should check this out. If you're a fan of um, Southern short stories, Southern writing, as Erica was talking about, there's some really great colloquialisms in this in this collection, some really fun phrases that she's scattered throughout that um, you are maybe familiar with, maybe you're not familiar with, but they're um, some really fun ones and some really great ones that give you a sense of place with the book. So check this book out and add it to your list, especially if you are maybe traveling this summer and you do want um, smaller snippets of of books. You know, short stories work great for that when you just have a little time to read and you want to um, read something, have a great story, then uh, short stories are the way to go. So check uh, Proof of Me and other stories out and see what you think. Thank you, as always, for joining me. I hope that you will join me next time. I'll have another returning author on the podcast. This will be Edward Willett's third appearance, I believe, on the podcast. We are going to be talking about his new science fiction novel. So that will be a lot of fun. We are, uh, we haven't talked about science fiction in a while. So looking forward to having Edward back on the podcast. And that book is called The Tangled Stars. Again, as always, if you are a fan of this podcast and you have a little time on your hands and you would like to help us out, you can do that by liking, subscribing, following on whatever platform you listen to this podcast on. That will help you get the episodes as soon as they come out. Um, It will help us. Also helpful is if you leave a review. That can be written. It can be starred. It can be whatever is in your heart to do to get this podcast out to more listeners um, like you, people who love books. And then also, if you are of a mind to, you can follow on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Would love to hear from you, hear how your your summer has gone. My goodness, the next time we have an episode, it will be September, so we will be almost into fall. Um, maybe you are back in school, maybe your kids are back in school, but uh, let me know how your summer went, what you read over the summer, what your plans are for your fall TBR. Love to hear those things. Hope you're having a great week and hope that it is not drama filled like mine was last week. But I always hope that no matter where you are, what you're doing, what time of the week it is, your days involve plenty of time to get yourself lost in lots of good books. Thank you so much. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.